are going to discuss a uh, few uh, important aspects about the intersection between strategy that we discussed uh, in a previous session uh, and uh, the corporate strategy and the product strategy. It, this is a going to be a brief session where I will first talk about the competitive strategy fundamentals that we have already discussed it is on your screen and we have said that the two main uh, generic strategies that are used by organizations are either price based where you need to have a low cost operational excellence competency or product differentiation where you have to have uh, distinctive design user interface design product feature design capabilities. I have uh, referred for this particular session to certain important aspects that were pointed out by Professor McGroth in his uh, 2001 uh, publication. His uh, book is mainly about uh, the segmentation uh, and uh, product uh, strategy for high tech companies, but some of the topics there are uh, uh, important for any kind of uh, segmentation strategy and product uh, strategy today. This is kind of a, a map that uh, is uh, telling you uh, how we are going to how we are going to look at. So, as you see here we have strategic vision this is uh, the place where we start. The strategic vision tells us that what kind of expansion we need uh, whether we need more volume, whether we need more uh, profit, uh, whether we need more geography coverage, uh, where we need uh, a, a more high spending customers all those issues can be covered between the strategic vision and the from where this expansion strategy is created. And then the other side, so this is like what you uh, what you want, we often call it a position strategy. That means, you are at a certain position and you want to get to another position. So, this is position oriented. And then you have also a competency based or your resource based uh, strategy. That means, your core competencies and the kind of innovation uh, R and D design development capabilities you have. So, between these two you create some kind of a strategic balance from where you evolve what we call this platform strategy and product line strategy. This is actually what we are going to uh, discuss. Uh, we, it will actually later on relate to a more detailed competitive strategy, differentiation strategy, pricing strategy and other supporting strategies. We will discuss those in the uh, future sessions. Uh, today we are basically going to focus on this uh, that what exactly is this platform strategy. Platform is an architecture of common elements implemented across a range of products. One element in the platform usually represents a defining technology, but then using that element there can be different additions and alterations by which you can actually address different customer segment. Look at this, this is a very key diagram and this is the core of what this short session. You can see here that these are called the uh, uh, common elements. You see element A, element B, element C. These could be speed, uh, these could be uh, something like uh, material property, uh, say for example, you are into gear making and this is actually where your gears are uh, made of material which is you know very um, safe for uh, food and other items which will be meant for human consumption. Now, there as you can see uh, you can have uh, some elements. So, element C is the fundamental element say this one. Now, you may need to add some element B and some element A by which it becomes a range of product which will be very good for say food processing industry. On the other hand you may need to have another set of combination where you will need be able to address say the pharmaceutical industry. So, you are looking at the same types of products, but you are developing this product one 
and its variant which is product 1 b or product 1 a and then a, another set of product product 2 and or product uh, 5. Uh, so, here you can see suppose your core is coming from for the food processing industry. So, you have for the food processing industry gears and different other machine elements which you supply to people who manufacture food processing machines. So, accordingly you have product 1, product 1 a, 1 b, 1 c this is your core. Then you say okay, if I can add few other uh, properties then maybe I can address the pharmaceutical industry. Okay. So, then you actually create by adding those elements. So, platform therefore, as you can see it is like stacking uh, this is a platform right. Then on that we are stacking another set of uh, elements on that we can add another set of elements. So, you can think of this as a kind of a jigsaw puzzle. So, today you are actually uh, covering certain markets using these two blocks and you know in the we the children play with blocks or Lego pieces. So, it is like these two blocks together give us one uh, kind of marketing uh, capability segmentation targeting positioning capability and by adding this and then this actually gives us another set of market addressability and then maybe we can add another block by which actually we are able to uh, create uh, 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 another set of uh, marketing capability. So, this is a key concept and today as you can see from the strategy that are deployed by uh, very capable companies say for example, uh, Intel right. So, Intel first came with uh, microprocessors and those were used for uh, almost hobby computers. So, in the very early days uh, you know when this uh, 186, 286 uh, uh, computers came they had limited capability, but they were uh, uh, an exciting tool for people who were interested in computation itself. But from there, uh, so therefore, that elements those microprocessor uh, basic architectural elements have uh, remained the same that is kind of the platform of their uh, and the platform actually also determines the kind of machines capabilities processes uh, people their competencies all those all that having put together then they created higher speed microprocessors and as they kept on uh, adding stacking elements after elements with respect to speed, with respect to uh, safety, with respect to security, uh, with respect to addressability of memory uh, etcetera. Market segments kept on adding one top of the other. So, from the hobby computer enthusiasts they were able to address uh, the need of everyday people and you see on the parallelly there were development uh, happening in the software side. So, as Intel was developing so were Microsoft and other companies and so stack by stack block by block you created the basic platform remained the high quality of almost flawless uh, microchips, but those microchips by different kind of additions kept on becoming more and more powerful and they could actually address the need of home computing and today they can address the need of almost every kind of computing. So, you can actually even today string together uh, personal computers which were originally created using the uh, first set of microprocessors. Now, you can even use a create a super computer for uh, fantastic performances stringing together uh, these and which is very uh, ably it has been demonstrated by organizations in India like CDAC. And so, that is actually a, another way of uh, looking at the power of this uh, platform technology. And today you know uh, you can actually add elements and you can actually create a computer for suitable for uh, complex uh, game 
players, computer based game players. You can actually create something which is very uh, suitable for graphic designers and uh, uh, people who are in publishing business. You can create another class of uh, computers primarily meant for people who are doing visual image management and visual image technique and even um, you know making short films and editing films and so on. So, uh, hardware and software both today therefore, uh, take this kind of platform and they work hand in hand and a platform therefore, you can also think about these elements and their combinations create products for different market segments for different market needs. So, you do not every time uh, take a monolithic approach and you do not actually create. So, if you look at even a chair today, if you compare it with chairs that were made some 50 years back and you compare that with an office chair that is made today, you will see it comes in different modules. So, that if you if the wheels break, you can change the wheels. If the back is not properly functioning, you can change the back of the chair, you can change the seat of the chair. The modularity is a concept that goes very well with this platform concept and between modularity and the platform, we have made products which are much better for manufacturing, much better for repairing. So, all this what we call design for x, design for manufacturability, maintainability, um, reliability all these have become possible because of this platform and modular strategies. So, this is a kind of a summary uh, that explains the benefits of the platform strategy and how it actually allows us to do rapid and consistent product development. So, if, if you actually take today uh, uh, open your computer and you look at the motherboard, you will most probably find that it is a board where number of uh, places are vacant. So, we actually uh, uh, those are deliberately created because those are um, uh, places where you can just insert tomorrow uh, and because today you know all these chips they come in easy insertion mode. So, you can actually uh, sometimes of course, they may be too small for you to do it at home, but some may be actually you can expand your memory size for example, of your computer just by using a, a a another memory chip. That vacant space allows you to add another uh, memory chip and uh, that a depiction of this uh, modularity and platform strategy that we discussed. And uh, platforms are uh, for example, this Apple uh, platform the Mac OS or the Motorola processor or different kinds of easy to use GUI that is graphic user interface like your mouse etcetera. These are all different uh, uh, examples of the platform strategy and uh, a product portfolio is what happens if you actually deploy your platform strategy well. You see using this platform strategy you have product 1, 1 A, 1 B, 1 C this is a product portfolio. You have product 2, product 5. So, product portfolio is fundamentally using the product platform and modularity strategy. You create different combinations. So, they are not entirely different certain elements will be same in all the products and, and thereby you actually uh, create uh, different strokes for different folks. You create products which are highly appealing to different kinds of uh, uh, customer segments. With who, so, take for example, even a simple thing like uh, muesli or breakfast cereal. So, you have corn flakes, you have oats and they are all fundamentally may be based on uh, say corn flakes or may be based on oats and then you can add elements and you can create a particular uh, which is meant for wet uh, people who want to lose weight or you can actually create something which is very tasty and appealing to uh, children or you can create something which is very important for people who need high level of energy uh, sports persons and so on and you create another sort of breakfast cereal. 
So, you see uh, this is an easy one to understand your base is our oats and then you are adding uh, maybe different types of nuts or different types of uh, uh, fiber elements or different types of uh, seeds uh, which you make it suitable and appealing or maybe uh, chocolate chips uh, or uh, dry fruits and it uh, you therefore create different products. So, this is what we will call creating a product portfolio using the power of product platforms and modularity. So, that very quickly we can address different types of market segments. So, you remember that uh, uh, TAM 1 that we said your addressed market to start with, but then step by step using this modular approach you can at one point of time cover the entire uh, TAM 2 or the total addressable market or everything that can be all kinds of breakfast cereal markets can be addressed once you approach this, because you can then increase the speed of uh, your deployment. Also the other important point our ending point is that a product portfolio with open interface often allows other manufacturers to participate and gives the company a smaller portion of the entire market but a small portion of a very large market is uh, better than a large portion of a small market. And example I think you can easily guess like say Sun Microsystem Java. This is actually a open uh, product system that many people can use and Sun Microsystem did all the research and all the investment in that and they continue to uh, promote this. But by using uh, Java. Uh, Sun Microsystems own products have benefited, but a large number of different types of products and software have been created which make Sun's own workstations uh, much more appealing to customers. Or a great example uh, the, uh, the collaboration between uh, Google Android and the handset association. So, Google keeps on uh, developing Android and add, adding features as you know they are all called candies you know lollipops and etcetera etcetera. Um, and they keep on uh, creating these versions put all the investment and they in a way it actually uh, expands uh, the appeal of the smartphones and handsets more and more handsets are used more and more people use uh, Google Android and that becomes a dominant. Uh, uh, operating system and sometimes companies use this for some kind of a grand vision that is not easily understandable right in the beginning, but as it keeps on expanding today as you can see that with the uh, high dominance that has been created Google by Google Android and the handset association collaboration you can now see that what are the different ways they are now trying to approach the requirements which were earlier fulfilled by uh, laptops and they are snatching that market away and the laptop sales are declining and the smartphones and the tablet phones based on this Google Android and the handset association collaboration it is rising. So, this you can actually sometimes by creating this open interface platform you can create some long range highly powerful strategies in case of products. That is where we end today and we will further expand on this in the next session. Thank you.